So today's video is going to be another solved true crime case. Today is day number five of 10 days of terror. If you are new to my channel, every single day up until Halloween and on Halloween, I am uploading a true crime video. And I've already done, this is the fifth one in the series. And there's another five to go after this. So make sure you're subscribed if that is something that you wanna see. So today we're gonna be talking about the solved case of Rebecca Aylward. I think that's how you pronounce her surname. I'm sorry if it's not. So quickly before I get into this video I just want to give my usual disclaimer that I mean absolutely no disrespect to anyone that I talk about in this video. This is all just information that I have found on the internet and I'm compiling into one video. So Rebecca Aylward was born on February 28th 1995 in Bridgend in South Wales. She was the oldest of three siblings. She had a younger sister and then a younger brother named Jessica and Jack and they were all pretty close as they were growing up. Rebecca was a very empathetic person. She was known to be the one in school that stood up to bullies if someone else was being bullied. She always wanted to protect and help other people. When Rebecca was around 13 years old, she met a boy that would soon become her boyfriend, Joshua Davies. Both of them were very intelligent, very ambitious, they behaved well in class, they were like the male and female version of each other. They seemed perfect for each other. Rebecca absolutely adored Josh Davies. He was her first ever like proper boyfriend and so he spent a lot of time at the house. He got on really well with Rebecca's parents. Her siblings loved him as well. So Josh Davies had some unusual interests for lack of a better term. I don't want to call them unusual but that's the only word I can think of right now. He used to collect antique guns and hunting knives and things like that which I mean for a good kid that's not violent or aggressive whatever makes them happy you know. And Rebecca and all her friends and even sometimes her younger siblings would often go over to Josh Davies house and just chill there, listen to music, watch TV, whatever. But one time when Rebecca and her younger sister Jessica went round to Josh's house, he actually pretended to threaten Jessica with a hunting knife. I mean, she knew it was a joke, she was freaked out, but she knew it was a joke and so they just kind of laughed it off. Josh was also quite a talented artist. He always used to draw pictures of monsters and devils in battle with knives and swords and guns and blood. And Rebecca really liked these drawings. She used to show them to her parents. She was really proud of her boyfriend and she thought he was really talented. So three months into their relationship, Josh spent the weekend over at Rebecca's house with her family. And just before his mum picked him up on the Sunday evening, he actually told Rebecca's parents that that was the best weekend of his life. They were laughing and joking all weekend together. Rebecca painted Josh's nails. They were taking photos together, playing games together. They were really happy. However, just a couple of hours after leaving Rebecca's house, Josh broke up with her. And Rebecca's mum said that she was devastated. She just couldn't understand why. They just had a really good weekend together. And then just hours after he left, he texted her breaking up with her. She couldn't understand what had changed. And after the breakup, Josh's attitude towards Rebecca just completely flipped on its head. He was spreading rumours about her, saying that she was pregnant to everyone. He was kind of bullying her. He suddenly seemed to hate her and he wanted everyone around her to hate her as well but since they shared a lot of the same friends this didn't really work. At one point one of their friends just said to Josh look just forget Rebecca even exists just ignore her you're gonna be leaving school soon you'll never have to see her again then. To which Josh replied that just being aware of her existence made him angry like even if he didn't have to see her every day just knowing that she was out there in the world made him angry. Rebecca at this time began expressing to her friends that she felt that Josh wanted to kill her. The bullying had been going on for months and it wasn't showing any signs of slowing down either. And her fears weren't all that far-fetched because what Rebecca didn't know was that Josh was discussing with his friends all the different ways in which he could kill Rebecca. And obviously his friends didn't think he was being serious. They all just thought he didn't like her and so he was just saying all these kind of out there things. He was talking about how he could take her to a local bridge and push her off or maybe even try and get her to jump off herself. But like I said, Josh was into all kinds of dark stuff. He collected knives, he collected guns, he used to draw devils and monsters and blood and knives and battles and things. However, as a person, he didn't really have like a violent or aggressive nature at all. And so his friends just didn't think much of it. Eventually, after a few months, things seemed to cool down between Josh and Rebecca. They weren't friends again, they weren't back together again, but the bullying just kind of stopped. They were in the same friendship group, they had to spend a lot of time together and so Josh just decided to give it a rest. 
However, he secretly still hated Rebecca. And then in the summer of 2010, Rebecca felt really ill and she was spending a lot of time in hospital. She was vomiting, she was having blackouts and doctors did so many tests on her yet they couldn't diagnose this illness. They had no idea what was wrong with her. All of her friends while she was in hospital continued to text her, ask how she was, come and see her and things yet Josh didn't even text her once. Josh's life was just kind of carrying on as normal. He was acting as if Rebecca didn't even exist, even though they shared all the same friends. All of her friends were talking about how she was in hospital, how she was really ill, yet he just didn't seem to care. So Josh and his friends had this kind of tradition where every Saturday morning they would all meet up at a local cafe and eat breakfast together. And on this one particular Saturday, they did exactly that. They went to the cafe, they got their breakfasts, and Josh, as he often did, began talking about killing Rebecca. And as I've been saying, Josh's friends didn't believe him in the slightest. They thought that they were just really outlandish claims just because he didn't like her. He was just kind of joking about how much he didn't like her, like exaggerating it. And so this time, one of his friends decided to put a bet on Josh's outlandish claims. This friend said to Josh, right, if you do kill Rebecca like you're saying that you're gonna, the Saturday after, I'll buy you a free breakfast. And normally these kind of bets are done with higher stakes. So someone will make a really outlandish claim and you'll say, if you do that, I'll give you a hundred pound. Because you don't believe they're gonna do it. So you don't believe that you're gonna have to part with a hundred pounds. His friend didn't think that he was gonna have to buy him a breakfast. He didn't think that Josh was being serious. And Josh said, okay, then they all laughed at this joke. And then it became like a running joke in the group that if Josh did kill Rebecca, like he said he was gonna, he'd get a free breakfast. And they used to like bring it up quite a bit, laughing about it. Meanwhile, Rebecca was discharged from hospital. She recovered from that illness that they never found out what it was. She returned to school in September and she just kind of started fresh. She got a new boyfriend, she just seemed like a complete different person. She was moving on with her life and Josh didn't like that. Suddenly Josh liked Rebecca again. He was friends with her, he was kind of jealous of her boyfriend and a lot of people thought that he wanted to be with her again, like her boyfriend. And this whole time Rebecca felt the same way. She'd always had feelings for Josh. She said that she always would. She would have dropped anything to be with him if he changed his mind. Then on Friday, October 22nd, Josh texted Rebecca out of the blue saying that he wanted to meet up with her and implied that they might get back together. Rebecca was ecstatic. She ran downstairs, she showed her mum all the chats, and then they noticed that Josh had changed his profile picture on Facebook. This was something that Josh would do when he was about to do something big, when he was about to make a big decision. So say he was about to ask Rebecca to be his girlfriend again, he would change his profile picture because he was doing something big. And this time, Josh had changed his profile picture to a picture of the local woods and Rebecca and her mum couldn't quite figure out what that meant. Because normally the picture would reflect the event that was gonna happen in his life. So say he was starting a new school, he would change his profile picture to the picture of the school. So they couldn't quite understand why he changed it to a woods, but they knew that this meant that he was about to do something big. And so this only made Rebecca even more excited that he changed his profile picture the night before he asked to see her and implied that they were gonna get back together. She thought that maybe that meant that he was definitely gonna ask her out. So the next morning on Saturday, October 23rd, Rebecca woke up, she was all excited. She was about to meet Josh and probably get back with him. Her mum, Sonia, recalled Rebecca singing and dancing about her room while she was getting ready. She'd bought a full new outfit to wear. She just seemed so happy. Meanwhile, Josh was having his usual Saturday morning breakfast at the cafe with his group of friends and he actually left early to go and meet Rebecca. As he was getting up and getting his things ready to leave, he turned to his friends and said, the time has come. So Rebecca got dropped off at the train station where she was supposed to be meeting Josh and she waited there for about 10 minutes and he never showed up. And then she got a text from Josh saying, change of plans, meet me at the park. And so she set off to this park instead. So she got to the park and Josh wasn't there. So she waited a bit longer thinking that he was on his way there. She was there for another 10 minutes and then she started fearing that maybe Josh wasn't gonna turn up. Maybe he'd stood her up. So Rebecca rang her mum while she was waiting at the park for Josh. She was just kind of explaining the situation when she got another text from Josh 
this time telling her to meet him in the village. At this point, Rebecca was still on the phone to her mum, who said she wasn't happy about Rebecca walking all this distance between all these different places to go and meet him. And so she made Rebecca stay on the phone to her as she was walking from the park to the village, just in case Josh was standing her up, maybe he was messing her about, sending her to all these different places. She just wanted to stay on the phone with her daughter. So eventually, Rebecca got to the street in the village where Josh had told her to meet him, and again, he wasn't there. She waited for a few more minutes and she was just about to get upset about it when she saw a boy walking down the hill that she thought might have been Josh. Her mum stayed on the phone the whole time. She was saying, are you sure it's Josh? She said this over and over again and Rebecca was saying, I think so, I think so. And then he finally got up close and Rebecca said, yep, this is definitely Josh. And Sonia, Rebecca's mum, said that normally when she'd be on the phone to Rebecca and Josh was around, he'd normally say something down the phone to her. He'd normally shout, hi, or how are you, Sonia? But this time he was silent and he'd never been silent before. He didn't even say hi to Sonia on the phone he just stood in silence and waited for Rebecca to get off the phone. Anyway, Rebecca said, bye mum, love you. She put down the phone and then went off with Josh somewhere. Around four hours later at 5 p.m., Rebecca's mum, Sonia, got a text from Rebecca's auntie saying that she'd tried to get in contact with Rebecca, but it hadn't worked. Her phone was off or something, so can she pass on a message? And this worried Sonia a little bit because normally Rebecca was really good at answering her phone. She never let it run out of battery. And now that Sonia thought about it, she should have been home hours ago anyway. Rebecca was just planning on meeting Josh in town and then they were both gonna make their way back to Rebecca's house, but it had been four hours. So they began calling around all of Rebecca's friends, yet none of them had seen or heard from her all day. And so Sonia and Rebecca's auntie got in the car and began physically searching for her. They went to places that they knew that Rebecca had been that day. So the train station, the park, and then they went to the village. They were looking around all the streets in the village, yet there was no sign of Rebecca. Rebecca's younger sister, Jessica, and Rebecca's best friend were constantly calling both Rebecca's phone and Josh's phone since they knew that they were together that day and neither of them were picking up. Sometimes it would go straight to voicemail and sometimes it would ring through a little bit and then the call would get declined. So they knew that the phones weren't switched off. They knew that someone was intentionally not answering the phones. But by around eight or nine o'clock that evening, it was dropping dark. There was still no sign of Rebecca. At this point, she'd been gone for around seven or eight hours. And so Sonia decided to report her missing. And then finally, around an hour after Sonia had officially reported Rebecca missing, she finally got in contact with Josh Davies who said he'd never actually seen Rebecca that day. He'd actually been at his grand's all day. But a couple of hours before that, he'd posted on Facebook that he was with friends. But I mean, either way, he still wasn't with Rebecca. But he said he did speak to her that day on the phone when she was actually in the village. He said that he was stuck at his grandma's all day and he wouldn't be able to go and meet her. To which Sonia said, so that wasn't you that was with Rebecca when she was on the phone to me in the village? And Josh just said, no, that wasn't me. But Josh did seem pretty worried. He seemed almost equally as worried as Sonia was and so they agreed to tell each other if they had any developments and they ended the call. That night all of Rebecca's friends took to social media including Josh spreading awareness of her disappearance and Josh even posted on Sonia's wall saying that he felt sorry for her. These searches continued into the night and the next morning when Rebecca still wasn't found it was all over local news and that was when one of Josh's friends heard about Rebecca's disappearance on the news and he immediately suspected Josh. This boy told his parents that he feared that Rebecca was probably her and so he told his parents to ring the police and tell them about this specific wood. But anyway, police went and searched this wood and there they found the body of 15 year old Rebecca Aylward laying face down. Her post-mortem found that she'd been hit in the back of the head with a rock several times, so much that her skull had actually caved in and she ended up dying of brain injuries. So police immediately arrested two boys, Josh Davies and his friend. Although Sonia, Rebecca's mum, told police that Josh was innocent, he had to be innocent, he would never do anything like this, especially not to Rebecca. But police told Sonia that they believed it was actually him that physically carried out this murder. So police went round and questioned all of Rebecca's friends to see if they had any idea who could have done this, and every single one of them said the same name. Josh Davies. So Josh Davies was charged with the murder of Rebecca Aylward and his trial began in July of 2011. And it was then during his trial when police found out that this probably wasn't Josh's first attempt at killing Rebecca. During the search of Josh Davies' home, police found several bottles of homemade poison made using deadly nightshade, foxglove and Coca-Cola, done by Josh himself. 
And while it can't be proven that these were meant for Rebecca, they didn't have a name on or anything like that, but based on evidence and based on the fact that he did end up killing her, police believe that they probably were intended for her. And poisoning was one of the methods that Josh talked about quite a bit when talking with his friends about the many ways in which he could kill Rebecca. And on a search of Josh's phone records, police found that just days before the murder, Josh had texted his friend saying, don't say anything, but you might just owe me a breakfast. And then on the day of Rebecca's murder, about an hour after she got off the phone to her mum, Josh's phone records showed that his friend texted him saying, are you with Rebecca? To which Josh replied back, define with, meaning that he was with Rebecca, but she was dead. So Josh Davies' defence in court was that he was there during the murder, but it wasn't actually him that committed it, it was actually his best friend. Josh claimed that he and Rebecca were there that day with his friend, and the two of them actually played a joke on Josh's friend. And that was when the friend got mad and began hitting Rebecca over the head with a rock. So the judge asked Josh to recreate how his friend hit Rebecca over the head with this rock, and you could just tell by the way that he was doing it, he was doing it from memory. He was reenacting what he'd done to Rebecca. But one of Josh's friends testified to say that Josh was the killer and that Josh had even taken him to see Rebecca's dead body. Josh told this friend that he'd initially tried to kill Rebecca by snapping her neck, but, and this is a quote from Josh, it's harder than you think. And when that failed, Rebecca realised Josh's intentions. She began screaming, she began trying to fight him, she began trying to run away, and Josh realised that he had to kill her now. She was gonna run off and tell someone that he'd tried to kill her, so now he had to kill her to shut her up. So Josh panicked, he looked down at the floor, saw this huge rock and just picked it up and began hitting her over the head with it. And Josh said that the worst part of the murder for him was feeling and seeing Rebecca's skull cave in. On July 27th, 2000. 11, Joshua Davies was found guilty of the murder of Rebecca Aylward and he was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 14 years. And that completes this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. This is a super, super sad one. She was so young. It's especially so sad when you remember how much she adored this boy. She was willing to drop everything, her new boyfriend, everything to go and meet him. She was so happy when he asked to meet up with her. She was dancing around a room. She thought that they were going to get back together. But that whole time, Josh was planning to kill her. Like, it's just so sad. It's so sad. And I don't know if this is going to come across the wrong way, but I'm glad that that morning, Rebecca was happy and she was hopeful, thinking that she was going to get back together with this boy. She must have been so happy and excited that day. I don't know at what point things turned for the two of them, but I hope it was relatively fast that things happened. I hope she wasn't thinking for a long time that she was gonna die. I'm just gonna stop talking, you know, because I'm making things sadder by the second. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a thumbs up because that really helps me out. Subscribe if you want to see some more content like this. Like I said, I'm doing 10 days of terror on my channel. Every single day, there's gonna be a new true crime video. So if that is something you want to be a part of, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Quickly, before I end this video, I just wanna say a massive thank you to all of my new channel members. I only announced it yesterday and there's already so many of you so thank you so so much It does mean the world to me that you want to support me that little bit more that you believe in my content and you believe in me as a creator It just it does make me really happy So thank you so much if you are a channel member and if you're not a channel member don't worry I love you all so much. You're all amazing support me in whatever capacity you can or whatever capacity that you want to don't feel like you have to give me money for these extra perks. Only do that if you want the perks. Don't feel like I'm sitting here asking you to do that. Don't feel like I'm forcing you to do... Just... I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm rambling. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for a serial killer video. Bye.